Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the volume of a solid of revolution. And this volume, that is the integral representing the volume, is going to require us to use the technique of integration by parts. So let's consider the region bounded in the xy plane that is the Cartesian plane by y equals ln of x and y equals 0 between x equals 1 and x equals e. Let's find the volume of the resulting solid when this region is rotated about the x-axis. So as usual, let's begin with a picture. I used GeoGebra to sketch this picture. Here we have y equals ln of x. This green vertical line is x equals e. And this blue line here is x equals 1. And this is the region in question. And we're rotating this region about the x-axis, which should give us this kind of cup here, or sideways round cup. So this cup would be right about here on top, rotated. So let's start by examining a representative slice of this solid. If I were to cut this with a knife with some thickness here, I would get a disc. And the thickness of this disk is the change in x. This is parallel to the x-axis. So to find the distance or the thickness here, I would just have to subtract points along the x-axis. So this is just delta x. That tells me that when I find my formula for volume, I'm going to have to integrate with respect to x. Volume of a solid of revolution using the slicing method can really just be thought of as the integral of the area of a representative slice. So what is the area of a representative slice going to look like? So the area is going to be the area of this circle here. And let me draw a two-dimensional version of that. So that would be here. And in the middle here, we have the x-axis. And the radius, r in this case, well, r is just given by the natural log of x. So the area of this circle with respect to x is equal to pi r squared, which is just pi times ln. OK, so here's the integral representing the volume of this solid of revolution. And let's use parts to evaluate it. So let u equal ln of x quantity squared. Then dv is equal to dx. So v is equal to x. That one's fairly straightforward. The derivative of this we have to um, find using the chain rule. So du is equal to 2 times ln of x times 1 over x dx. OK, I've made a little more space so we can continue. So the volume is equal to pi times ln of x quantity squared times x. And that's evaluated from 1 to e. Then we're going to subtract this integral here. So the product of these, and this is going to be 1 over x times x. So those will just go to 1. So this is going to be the integral of 2 times ln of x dx. This is also from 1 to e. Now I'm going to rewrite this into two separate problems. That is, I'm going to write this as pi times x ln of x quantity squared evaluated from 1 to e minus 2 pi times the integral from 1 to e of ln of x dx. Now if you're wondering why I'm doing that, that's because I want to solve this part, which I'm going to call a, and this portion, which I'm going to call b, separately. That tells me that my volume is just going to equal a minus b. All right, so let's take care of a first. With A, I'm at the final step where I just need to evaluate this at the limits of integration. So A is equal to pi times E times ln of E quantity squared minus 1 times ln of 1 quantity squared. So this is pi times E times 1 squared minus 1 times 0 squared or just e pi. Now that A is done, I can take care of B. So B 
is equal to 2 pi times the integral of 1 to e of ln of x dx. And again, I'm leaving the negative off the front because I'm taking that into account here. Now, you are expected to have already watched my video where I showed how to integrate ln of x using parts that the indefinite integral of ln of x dx is equal to x times ln of x minus x plus c. So let's use that here. So b is equal to 2 pi times x ln of x minus x from 1 to e. So that's 2 pi times e ln of e minus e minus 1 times ln of 1 plus 1. So this becomes 2 pi times e times 1 minus e minus 1 times 0 plus 1. e times 1 is just e minus e will just be 0. So this term here goes away. 1 times 0 is just 0. So that also goes away. So b is just equal to 2 pi. All right, now that that is all done, we can put this all together. Recall our volume is just a minus b. A works out to be e pi, and B worked out to be 2 pi. So the volume is e pi minus 2 pi, or just pi times e minus 2. I hope this video was helpful.